everyone, welcome to The Reluctant Chef. Today we are making a coconut curry. I have not made this recipe before, but I'm gonna do something a little different. The recipe calls for a head of garlic, and since my daughter-in-law can't use garlic, I'm gonna do the garlic in a separate pan so that I can add it into um, part of the dish. So I'm not gonna obviously do a whole head of garlic for that. But the recipe comes from The Endless Meal. Um, that's the website. So we're gonna use our Dutch oven rock crock. This is the, um, the ceramic. It is a high temperature, 752 degree um, glazed ceramic that you can use on your stove, in your oven, under a broiler. You can use it in your microwave. You can use it in your dishwasher and out on your outdoor gas or charcoal grill. So you can use it pretty much in every location. Um, it has a glass lid. The glass lid is um, heat safe up to 400 degrees, so don't put that out on your um, grill. But you can use it for all other items. So we're going to turn the front burner on to um, a low, and we're going to use some coconut oil. So when you guys use coconut oil, um, hi Megan! Um, coconut oil is really good to cook with, and it really will flavor um, whatever you're cooking, so you don't need to use a lot of it. So we're just going to use um, I think it's a tablespoon, so I'm just going to scoop out a little bit. Uh, we just want to get it on the bottom. So let's talk about the rock crock for a second. The rock crock needs to have liquid or food or oil in the bottom. You don't want to get um, dry spots on it. You want to make sure that the food is moving around it. It's a really good conductor of heat, so it will stay warm for a long time. Um, when you're using it. And it'll, once it comes up to a boil, it'll stay on a boil. The first time I used it, I um, got a soup and it got to a boil and I was like stirring and stirring it and then I moved it off the burner and it was still a rolling boil off the burner. I was so surprised. When I'm done, I'm going to stick it in the slow cooker stand, which also fits the everyday pan as well as the Dutch oven. Um, and I'm going to put it on low because my husband's out fishing because we are in Florida. And my son was out fishing earlier today as well. It was like 70 and lovely. It really was amazing. It felt like, no joke, I feel bad for all of you back in New Hampshire, Megan. It felt like summer today. It was so hot and humid. My hair went like, whoo, I had to like put some gel in it. And um, I ran over to the beach for my lunch hour and I just sat at the beach and there was nobody around and it was quiet and you could hear the waves rolling in. It was fabulous. Um, and it was so hot. It was so humid. It was pretty crazy. So um, I am going to. Oh, I wonder. This is the uh, this is the fun task when you're at um, a new house, trying to figure out which drawer has the right tool you're looking for. So I got some measuring spoons down here. This kitchen is so amazing. There are so many drawers here and cabinets. Um, I'm not even sure I use them all yet. Let's see. I don't know where my um, my grater is for my ginger, so I'm gonna have to use. It's supposed to be right here. See, there's two plastic pieces, but somebody put this away somewhere else. It's snowing. <laughs> Snow shoeing, huh? Um, so we're gonna use the uh, coarse grater. Normally, I use the fine grater for my ginger, but um, I don't know what cabinet that ended up in. So uh, recipe calls for heating the oil and then adding cumin and coriander seeds um, until they're brown and those will eventually pop. So I didn't have the seeds so we're going to, you know, do a Susie substitute and we're going to just use coriander and, um, and uh, what was it, coriander and cumin anyway, just the, the way it is. And then what we're going to do is, oh I have curry, not cumin. Oh, see how unprepared I am? I know that there's curry in this because it's a curry dish. Um, turmeric, ginger, garlic, coriander. Oh, it does have cumin, but I thought I had curry. I don't know where the curry is. All right, somebody's going to have to tell me where the curry in this recipe is because there's no curry in this coconut curry uh, dish. So I'm not really sure if they meant curry and not uh, coriander. They said cumin seeds and coriander. Maybe I just don't know the difference. Maybe coriander is a version of a type of cumin. I have no idea, but we're going to use the ground version of it. So we're going to use a tablespoon of each. Oh, this is brains banking new. So we're also going to open a bottle of wine. So why don't I do that while, um, while my oil is... Um, uh, heating up in the pan. So let's talk about the electric wine opener, one of my favorite tools. 
fabulous. You push the button here and it'll pull the cork out. There's a new wine down here, um, 120, it's a cab. It's very inexpensive, very inexpensive, and it's not a bad wine. So it's one of those everyday wines, you know, when you're not having company over, um, it'll be one that's used regularly here. So you just hold the down button, and you want to make sure you're holding on to the bottle here, because otherwise the bottle will spin, and it goes down into the cork, and then pulls the cork out just by pushing the down button. And then when you push the up button, the cork will come down through. Did I move to Florida? I did move to Florida. I have been down here since February 1st. So um, we are down here. We are renting a beautiful place about a mile and a half from the ocean. Um, and it's about four to five miles from the actual beach. Navarre Beach is the name of the beach that I get to go to. And let me tell you, when they say it's the best beach around, it is. It's white, white, white. And it is... Um, super uh, fine sand and it has seashells everywhere, like tons and tons and tons of seashells. So I've been collecting seashells as tiny as like, oh my gosh, just teeny, teeny, tiny seashells um, and really big ones. We found some pieces of a sand dollar and the piece of the sand dollar was that big. So the sand dollar itself must have been, you know, the size of my head, it was crazy big. Um, okay. So this is heating up, um, and I'm going to go ahead and add my coriander. And we're going to do this all over a rice dish, and we're going to use lentils instead of doing chicken. You can do this dish with the chicken, but we're going to use a red lentil. Um, we're trying to eat less meat and more vegetables, you know, we're all trying to do that. Although I keep looking at all these desserts, I'm such a dessert eater, um, yeah, northeast winters are tough. Um, I've been looking at all of these really yummy desserts and I'm just like, oh, I really want to do that. All right, cumin. I'm going to have to get cumin here. Hold on. Sorry, unprepared. Chili powder, paprika, curry. Where's my cumin? Here we go. Cumin. I have to add that to the grocery list as well. Um, oh my gosh. I can't believe it's February down here. As you can tell, I'm wearing a sundress and I have my cute pink shoes on today. Um, I, I was wearing flip-flops and sandals. It was it was so hot and humid today. I said to my daughter, oh, it's lovely. And she laughed. She goes, yeah, talk to me in two months when you can't breathe and it's so hot. So uh, that'll be fun. All right, so we're going to add those in. We're going to let those brown. And then I'm going to do my garlic separately. And then um, we're going to use our smooth edge can opener. So for those of you who don't have one of these, you must have one. I had one in my kit, one in my kitchen and one in our camping kit because once you click this onto your, your can, it'll grab the can and remember helicopter blades fly on top. And I'm gonna post a picture on my personal Facebook wall as soon as I'm done with this of a video I took when I went at my lunch hour today to the uh, beach because a whole bunch of helicopters from the Air Force base were flying overhead and they were so low, it was crazy. I was laying down on the sand and I had my eyes closed and I could hear the you know, the whoop, 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 and off it came. So, let's talk about the differences of Florida and New Hampshire. Down here, we are very close to the Air Force Base, and they have Herbert, Hurlbert, I think it's called. Um, they have all kinds of um, ammunition. They have like, I don't know, 200 and something acres, maybe even more. I don't even know how many acres it is, but they have a huge amount of acreage that they do bombs, they practice bombing. And so every day you can hear boo, 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 out back. At first I thought it was um, thunder and lightning. Um, and then Chris explained to me that it was not. Um, okay, so we've got that going. We're going to, um, as soon as this gets a little bit hot and bubbly, I'm gonna add in my tomatoes. I'm gonna grate my fresh ginger into it. And I'm gonna add a little bit of the crushed uh, pepper flakes. And, um, and then I'm gonna add a cup of my red lentils. And I'm gonna add a couple of cups of water. Um, I have three cups of water here. I'm gonna put it in here. And we're gonna get it up to a, a low boil, low simmer. And we're just gonna let that go for a while. Now, when I'm ready to finish the recipe, um, so I won't be online at that time, I'm gonna be adding a can of coconut milk and I'm gonna be adding, um, hi Rose, a handful of cherry tomatoes into it as well. And those as they cook will kind of burst um, at the end. 
Um, I might even add spinach. I, I add spinach to everything because we all need more vitamin B, right? Um, so uh, I'll probably be doing that as well. Um, so let's make some rice. So I prefer, I mean my husband prefers to use a stock pot on the stove or a, a little cooking pot. I prefer my micro cooker because I don't have to pay attention at all. So <laughs> that's my kind of cooking. My kind of cooking is just um, dump it and uh, forget it, right? So we're going to use, uh, I packed up all of my rice. I bought rice. When COVID hit, when you couldn't buy anything in the grocery store, I went to Sam's Club. I bought a 25 pound bag of rice and flour. So I'm going to start some more um, sourdough bread again. Um, but I did uh, rice and so I put them in ball jar glasses to store them. So it took me a long time to uh, realize that I need to just start using this up because now everything is about back to normal except for COVID still around. but. We can get cleanups and wipes and all those things again. So uh, two cups, oh, I think I just did one cup. I better double check. You don't want to mess this up. It's one cup of rice. Okay, that was one cup of rice. So I'm going to do two cups of rice because I'm doing four cups of water. Because I like leftovers. Now, here's something I learned recently. You'll have to fast, fact check me on this, but I heard that if you cook rice and then you let rice cool down, like it's in your fridge overnight or whatever, and then you reheat rice, that it doesn't have the same um, sugar spike um, so that diabetics can um, not have as much of an issue with that. So I would love it if Ida's on, um, because <laughs> I know that she's a diabetic, uh, <coughs> excuse me, that... Um, she would double check that and see if that is um, true. Um, I heard that and I thought, oh, that's a good thing to do. All right, so, oops, we're getting hot. That's good. Now we're going to put our tomatoes in. Now, the reason you do your spices first and you get them hot with a little bit of oil is that helps to release all of the um, oils that have been dried into the spice and you're going to get a much better uh, flavor. I do that, uh, <coughs> excuse me, with my... Um, I do that a lot with my um, chili. When I'm doing chili, all of my um, cayenne and all of that. All right, so let me add just a dash of cayenne. We'll do two dashes, because everybody in this household likes it hot. We're going to take our um, fresh ginger. Now you can peel your ginger, or you don't have to peel your ginger. As I said, I usually use the microplane fine grater, but, um, oh, you know what? Let me show you the new tool that's out now. Hold me. tool that just came out. Um, I showed it earlier on my last chance first glance party. Now if you're not in that party, you probably should jump over to it. It's called um, Sneak Peek. February 25th, Sneak Peek. So if you haven't seen it, um, just message me and I'll add you to that. It's showing off all these new products, which if you haven't seen, I'm just going to pan my camera down to this end of the kitchen. Look how big this kitchen is, Rose. This here is an electric uh, grill and griddle. That is one of our new power tools, and I showed off a bunch of other power tools in the, um, in the group. So this here is, I'm going to turn this down because the rock crock gets hot. Um, this is a citrus juicer and zester. And guess what? Guess what this zester can do? It can probably also do my ginger because it's very it's just like my microplane adjustable grater so this has obviously this section and then it has the juicer and I am in the sunshine state so we'll probably be using that a lot for oranges so let's take our fresh ginger um, and don't use don't use dried ginger people really all you have to do is go to the grocery store oh this works slick um, now I'm going to give you a disclaimer because I'm absolutely sure that Pampered Chef says do not use this for grating um, because they don't want your fingers to get near the, um, the grating part. So don't use it for Parmesan cheese and stuff like that, but just keep your fingers away. And when you get to the end of your uh, ginger or something else, make sure that you're um, keeping your fingers away from it. But um, don't use jarred ginger. Don't use... Um, uh, powdered ginger. You really, it's so easy to do this, to just grate it yourself. It makes a huge difference in the flavor. 
and one piece you can break off. If there's big pieces of ginger, you can just break a thumb off and just bring home a piece that you need. And you can even freeze it and cook and break it from frozen. And um, what a difference it makes. It's like the difference between using fresh lemon in a recipe or using um, lemon, you know, the fake lemon or lemon from concentrate, big, big difference. So we'll put this over here, the dishwasher, put the rest of the ginger in here. So the ginger is going to give it a good bite to it um, and some really good flavor. So we get that going. So we have our rice in here, we have our water in here. So for this, this usually cooks five minutes on high or 15 minutes on half power. Um, you can do brown rice in this as well. We did do a brown rice dish the other day. We've been doing fish tacos. So Chris is out fishing for fish tacos. Um, I'm going to wait before cooking this because the, um, the curry is going to take us about 30 minutes. So I'm gonna wait 15 minutes in and make sure that I'm all set. So I added a cup of my lentils. I'm gonna add three cups of water to this. And um, I'm just gonna let it saute for a little bit. And then I will add the coconut, the tomatoes, and the crushed red peppers the last minute. And we'll be done. I'll post the recipe below. And if you're not in my last chance first glance party, jump on over there to see what you're missing. Thanks for watching.